QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Example Number 1 Enter Project Expenses and Progress Invoices. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. We also have open in an incognito window, the free sample company file. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window, which you can open if using Google Chrome by selecting three dots in the browser, new incognito window, typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, the sample company being useful, allowing you to enter data into the sample company to test without having to put that into our test company file on the left-hand side. And it allows us to look at the differences between the accounting view, the one that our test company file is in, and the accounting view, the one that the sample company is in. If you want to be toggling back and forth between those two views, you could go to the cog up top and then switch the view down below. Now, I'm also going to be opening up a few tabs to put our financial statement reports in now that we have data in them. I generally do this every time I right click up top duplicate the tab so that we can open one of the support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Favorites, and then I'm gonna right click on it again, duplicate it again. I would like to open up the balance sheet and the income statement. Back to the tab to the left, reports on the left hand side, and then I'm gonna to go to the balance sheet. And then I'm gonna put this from, let's say 070125 to 123125, running it. And then on the right-hand side, I'm gonna to go to the reports again. This time the income statement or profit and loss report, close the hand boogie, change the range, 070125 to 123125. I would like to see this by month. So I'm gonna break it out by month and then run it. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview on the left-hand side, and then uh, the reports on the left-hand side, balance sheet and the profit and loss reports located there. So last time we, we said that we have our project that we set up, we made an estimate for the $100,000 project, and then we basically sent out the prepayment that we we used the process billing for at uh, the 10 percent or ten thousand dollars even though we hadn't done any work at that point in time so now we're going to continue with this process and we're just going to be billing as we scheduled as we told the client that we're going to be billing and we're going to be recognizing the costs on the job as the costs of the job come up and we're not going to worry about the revenue recognition kind of a, a disconnect type of thing between the two, although we'll point it out. And then we'll, in a second presentation, we'll get into some more detail on what we might do to remedy that situation. All right, so let's go back on over. We're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go back to the first tab and we've been working within our projects over here. So we set up our project number one. Let's go into project number one. And then let's pretend that our first our, our second month uh, has happened so we're gonna say in month two that's when the job actually uh, starts and we're gonna say that let's not highlight this side we're gonna say that we have 13 uh, 18 in actual costs so let's put those into the system so we're gonna say all right normally that would be like an expense type of form that we would be paying for stuff 
Usually we would have multiple expense forms that we would be paying to multiple vendors that would basically be grouped or categorized under our main buckets when we have a project or job of overhead materials and labor. But I'm just gonna kind of group it into one. I'm gonna make a generic vendor, that's who we're paying. And I'm gonna say that uh, the payment account, I don't have my cash account set up. So I'm gonna set up a cash account. So if you don't have a cash account here, I'm gonna say add account. And this is gonna be a bank account. And I'm gonna make it my checking account. So I'm just gonna call it checking. And then I might just put like the last four digits of, a, of the checking account number or something like that if I had multiple accounts for internal accounting purposes, but I'll keep it at that. So I'm gonna then save it. So there's our payment account. I'm gonna put, say that this happened on the second month. So I'm gonna say 081525 uh, because we're working in 2025. I'm not gonna put a, a tag. I'll put project one on all of them to track the tags. And then I'm gonna say that we could do it by category now. And this would assign the expense to a category, which if it was for a project, you would expect it to be going to like a cost of goods sold category or a, a work in process kind of category. But oftentimes we assign them by items because the items can, can help us to assign things out, help us to purchase things like the material and possibly allow us to pull the items over to an invoice if we're using that billable component. So we've already set up the items. I'm gonna put in the generic items of materials. Now remember, you, normally you would have multiple kinds of materials you might be purchasing that would then be going to the account of you know materials as a general bucket of uh, expenses, which would be a cost of goods sold type of account or something like that. But I'm gonna group it into the generic bucket of materials. I'm just gonna make three items that add up to that 13 amount. So let's say that this was uh, 6,000. I'm not gonna make it billable. So I'm not gonna make it billable. This customer job would be there if we made it billable, but I'm not going to. This time we'll see that later. I will assign a class to it, allowing me to break out the income statement by class, which is nice. And then I'm gonna say that we want labor this is another item that we set up, which will be basically going to the cost of goods sold account for the labor. I'll make this at 4,000. I'm not gonna make it billable. Therefore, we don't need a customer or project. We'll talk about that later. This also going to job number one. And then I'm gonna say overhead, which is the item we set up before, the three main buckets. And I'm gonna say that this is going to be for the difference, which is 3018. So 3018, not gonna make it billable. Also going to job or class number one. So the total adds up to the 1318. This is an expense form, decreasing the checking account. The other side being assigned by these items, which are gonna basically gonna go to cost of goods sold. So I'm gonna say, all right, uh, let's save it and close it and check it out. So now, we have the costs assigned to our project in our in our project summary over here, net profit. So basically a little income statement within our project, which is great for that individual project. But I would also often like to see the projects kind of together or an income statement broken out kind of by project. So I could then go up here and say, let's look at my balance sheet. I'm gonna run it again. Notice if I, I could hit the total here and run this by classes. And it gives me a breakout of, of the class over here, but not all the balance sheet accounts will be broken out by class uh, right now. We just have basically the net income that's being broke out by class. So then if I go over here and then I say run this again, so now we didn't recognize uh, revenue, but we have the expense, which is now being uh, happened, the expense happened in August, and we just assigned it to cost of goods sold because uh, these are gonna be expenses for the job. Now, notice if you're doing a percentage of completion type of thing, or you might put the, traditionally you would put the costs into like work in process on the balance sheet and then, you know, expense them. But if we're doing a percentage of completion, we might basically expense them as they happen and then recognize kind of a percentage of the revenue. Also, you might break out the cost of goods sold through multiple categories of cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold for labor, 
cost of goods sold for overhead, cost of goods sold for materials, but we're just going to group everything into cost of goods sold uh, here. So there's going to be our, our revenue that has been uh, recognized. Now note that I'm going to right click and do another. I'm going to duplicate this again, right click and duplicate. I'm going to close up uh, the ham boogie over here and and note that we can also hit this drop down and break it out by class so if I break it out by class run it now I've got only one class right now but if I had multiple classes this could be quite useful because it's gonna it's gonna give me not only the information per class but also the total on the right hand side which so that those classes are redundant because we already have it in projects but the, the ability to to break everything out by class can give me a double check on the numbers and can run a nice report that breaks everything out by classes now if you don't have the capacity to use classes or you're using classes for something else already you could do a similar thing with the tags so i can go to the tags over here and so now I've got my project here, but it doesn't give you that nice total at the end. So it's kind of similar. Tags are like a little bit, a tier down from, from doing similar functionality as the classes. So, so if you don't have capacity because you're in a lower software that doesn't have the classes, you can try to use the tags in kind of a similar format. Or if you're already using classes and location tracking, then you might use tags for like a similar kind of thing. All right, so then I'm going to go back to the first tab and let's imagine now now note that if we recap things here, the way we got that 100,000 estimate was probably something like we estimated the cost of the job and then our profit on the job, which we said was another 30% of the cost, right? Another 30% and that's where we got the 30, that gets us to the 100,000. So if we were trying to recognize revenue kind of as we go, on the job recognizing you know the progress in terms of costs then we could we would do a ratio or some of something like this this is what we've actually paid for at this point in time the costs we've incurred divided by the total estimate that would mean that we had were basically 16.92 percent done so that would mean the revenue that i would recognize if i if i was on like a trying to recognize a percentage of completion recognize as we go would be something more like the uh, 16.923 times the 100,000, right? But what we've recognized in revenue so far is the 10,000 just based on the billing schedule. And we recognize that before we even, you know, paid for anything yet, right? So that you can see the disconnect between the billing and when you might recognize revenue on a, recogni on a revenue recognition. So we're gonna continue with, with the separation between the two, and then we'll take a look at the differences uh, later. So let's take a look at, at the, the next billing item is going to be in, in next month. So I'm going to say, uh, let's say that happens in month three. Let's actually record the billing. So I'm going to go over here and we'll say, okay, let's go back and we're going to go into our projects. Now let's actually record the receipt of the payment and then we'll record the next the next billing that happened. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's go drop down and let's say we received a payment. So now we're gonna say project number one and let's say this happened on, uh, we, we let's say this happened actually on 7.07.15.25 uh, and we got paid by the client for that original deposit that we sent out. And it's gonna go into the checking account for this invoice and so let's go ahead and say okay save and close and if i go back over here to the balance sheet what happened goes out of accounts receivable and and uh into the checking accounts if i look at the checking account so now we see the payment that we've received we have negative still because the expenses were greater thus far all right next thing we're going to be back in our projects over here on the left and we're going to say now we had another bill invoice that we're going to be sending out just according to our invoicing schedule we can pull that in from our estimate using the progress invoicing and we're just going to say hey look next time the next estimate we had was the 25 percent 25 
So I'm gonna pull in 25%, and then it's gonna pull in nicely like per line item. So it gives us a nice breakout between materials, labor, and overhead that we just kind of made up so that we can see those different line items. And then I'm gonna say this happened on 080125 for the invoice. It's gonna go into project one. All the classes are gonna be lined up. This is gonna increase accounts receivable and the other side's gonna to go to revenue of the 25,000. Let's go ahead and save and close it. And so now we've got income at the 35,000. If I go to my uh, reports here, run it. So, so now we've got accounts receivable went up for the 25,000 and the other side went to revenue. If I run the profit and loss by uh, date, now I've got 25,000 recognized in August, the second month. Now note again over here, you would think if I had revenue recognition, uh, I should recognize something like 16 and then 25 instead of, instead of, you know, instead of uh, by the billing process, 10 and 25 here. So then I'm gonna say, okay, let's go back on over. Let's say that we received, we're gonna receive, and if I look at my breakout by class, so now we've got our breakout by class here. We only have one class so far, but you can see the idea. So if I go then to the first tab, let's say we've received payment on that one. I'm gonna hit the drop down and say we're gonna receive payment. And on project one, let's say this happens 15 days later, 8.15, they pay us. Time is passing, time is flying. So we're gonna receive that payment. This is gonna reduce the accounts receivable and increase cash. So I'm gonna save and close and then go over here and say, okay, balance sheet, the accounts receivable goes back down and it goes into the checking account. All right, and then let's say that we're going to have expenses for for month number three of 19,527. So let's record those expenses. Next project happens. I'm just gonna do it with one expense form again. And we'll say this goes to vendor one these are expenses for the job on, this is gonna be on nine, one, let's say. Actually, wait a second. This needs to be on the same date. Let's bring it back down to, to 8.15 that were the job that were, okay. So these are the expenses for that time frame. Now it pulled over the same stuff from the last time, but now I've got new numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to be something like 10, let's say this is 10,000. I'm not gonna make it billable. And then this is gonna be, let's say 10,000 not billable. That gets me up to, to 20. And actually, let's say this is, let's say this is 9,000, 9,000, not 90. That gets me to the 19, and then in the overhead, we'll say 527. So 527 overhead, not billable, not billable, not billable. Okay, so this is an expense. It's gonna decrease the checking account. The other side's gonna go into the cost of goods sold because these items are, are telling it to go to cost of goods sold. So let's save it and close it. And then I go back on over here. We can run it. So checking account goes down. The other side's going into the expense and the expense here for uh, August. So I should have done it. So that's, yeah, I should have done it for the next month. I think my expenses are off. I had two in here for August. Let's go back in here, check it out. Yeah. So this one, let's, let's change the date to the next month here. I'm gonna go back in, let's drill down on this one and let's bring it up to 9.15. All right, then I'll save it and close it. So now if I go back to my reports, uh, hold on, I don't wanna save it, exit and run it. So now my expenses are, are in the next month as they've been incurred, right? Okay, and so, but, so that would mean that you would think I would, if I was doing my percentage of revenue recognition, 
that I might recognize something like 25, 385, but I'm only recognizing revenue basically as the billing is taking place. Let's continue on with the last two just so we can see this play out and see that see what that difference looks like. I'm gonna go, okay, let's do the fourth one and we're gonna we're gonna bill for it on the next month. Let's go back on over and say boom, invoice for the next month, and I'm gonna pull that in from here. This one's gonna be 30%, 30%, and I'll pull that in. Pulls in nicely. And I'll say this is as of nine one, let's say. And then oh oh nine oh one two five. I just did that and then it did that. All right. And so then that pulls in nicely for the thirty thousand increase in accounts receivable, other side going to revenue. So I'm gonna save and close, check it out. So we've got then the balance sheet accounts receivable going up other side going to the profit and loss, revenue being recognized in uh, September because that's when we build it. And then if I look at it by class, there's our breakout basically by class. All right, back to the first tab. You know, actually, if I tie this out to my little worksheet here, I should have recognized the 25 and the 30 a month later. This 25 I should have recognized in September and the 30 in October. I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust that. I'm going back into August and I'll go in here and say, this needs to be, let's say September. So we'll bring that up to line this up. And then I'll save that, save it. And then I'll go back on over here. And then in September, the second one here, needs to be which i'm going to click on one of the thirty thousand dollar one needs to be the next month over in october october let's bring that up so there we have it and then i'm going to say save and close all right i think that lines up so let's say exit run it so now we had our billing schedule was july month one and then we didn't have any, and then September, October, I think that kind of matches our billing schedule over here. And then the expenses happened in month two and month three, which is uh, August and September. So you could see some mismatching between revenue and the expenses, which is kind of the issue from like a, like a revenue recognition principle because we've kind of disconnected these two things. Okay, so then let's go back on over I'm going to rec recognize my next expenses at this 14 uh, 201. So let's go back on over and that's going to be for uh, October. So let's go back to the first one, see if I can line this up properly. And we'll just do this again. Let's make this October. I'll put this now so I don't forget. October, uh, October 15, let's say. And then this is going to go to project. And we'll do the same thing down here. I'm just going to say this is going to be materials. Boom, boom. And we'll make up a number that will line up to that. Let's say, let's say 10 for the materials. Boom. I'm not going to make it billable. Class is going to be class one. And then I'm going to say labor is going to be for the 4,000. Four thousand not billable class one and then we'll say we've got the overhead overhead and wait not forty thousand four thousand all right and then that's going to be for the 201 we'll say 201 and again not billable not billable class boom and this will uh, this will decrease the, the cash account, the other side going to cost of goods sold. Save it and close it. Project, we can see here cash account goes down. Next tab over, running it. Now we've got October, our cost of goods sold 14201. If I look at the income statement by project, it's all lined up in this one project. 
Okay, so then let's do the last one. Month number five, I'm gonna bill out for the next month in November, 35,000, which is just the end of our billing process. So I'm gonna say, all right, another invoice coming from the estimate. This time, instead of putting a percent, I could just take the remaining amount, which of course is the 35,000 and just pull that in. And we'll say, okay, boom, boom. This is as of 11, 11, one, let's say. And so there we have that. 35,000, this is gonna increase accounts receivable. The other side going to, going to the uh, revenue. Save it, close it, tab over, running it. So now we've got accounts receivable going up. The other side going to revenue. If I run the revenue, there's the revenue and we don't have any expenses yet. Tab to the right and run it on our class by class. And then let's do the last expenses just to match everything out. Expenses for, this is gonna be for November, let's say November 15th or so. November 15th, it's gonna go to vendor one. Do you want to pre-fill? Uh, sure. Vendor one, and this time it's gonna be adding to the 30,000. So let's say that it's gonna be uh, 15,000, 15,000, and then 178. We'll say 178, make it unbillable, 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 class is applied, cash goes down, cost of goods sold is the other side assigned by these items. And then if I go to the test company, run it, there we have this, and tab to the right, run this. Something went wrong with that one altogether. <laughs> go back in there, 150, that's not right. There's an extra zero. It should add up to 30,178. All right, now let's save it and close it. Back, run it. Okay, so there's our 35, there's our uh, 3178. And here's our issue here with, again, the revenue not really lining up to a recognition concept. So, so, so to deal with that, you could run basically your projects like this, for example, and bill as things happen and possibly make adjusting entries to your jobs report. Uh, so that you can kind of separate the the stuff that the bookkeeping department does to external reporting, possibly for taxes or whatever, and where you might just have to make a year end adjustment or something like that to properly recognize the revenue on the open jobs and have your beginning jobs kind of line up. Uh, so that's one option, or you can of course adjust your your process to be more on a on whatever method you're using, like a percentage of completion method as you do the data input. So once again. Here's what we've got on the balance sheet. Let's go ahead and just receive uh, the accounts receivable just to close out the AR. So I'm gonna say, let's say uh, receive payments. And I'm gonna say that we're gonna do that on 11, 17, that's five. I'll receive these two invoices, reducing the accounts receivable, the other side going into the cash account. Save and close. So at the end of the day, we can kind of see here that on the balance sheet, we don't get this real breakout between the class tracking because the checking account and the accounts receivable don't really break out unless you're in uh, versions advanced of Pro Plus, but that's okay. We might see it in other balance sheet accounts we'll take a look at later. The income statement breaks out here and we can see our, our totals for the checking and the accounts receivable. With the profit and loss by by month, you can see the issue with the, the revenue recognition uh, being different than like a per percentage of completion or complete a contract kind of concept, which isn't an issue once the job is closed, it's a timing issue, which is usually the biggest problem at the cutoff dates, which for small companies might only be at the end of the year 
at the end of the year when they do taxes or something like that. But for large companies, you might have to report monthly and quarterly, which means you've got these cutoff dates where you have to uh, make, make sure that everything's properly reported on whatever methods you're using, you know, more, more often. And so, so, so you might adjust this using a, using an adjusting entry into the period method for smaller companies that might be easier or you again you can adjust it by using a different concept which we'll talk about later you can run it by a job here so that you could see each job we only have one job but it gives you a nice little income statement which kind of sums up over here similarly in the project where you've got income minus the cost and the profit you can also run the project reports so if i go to report by project i can see profitability by project and you might say look this is redundant this here to the profit and loss by class because the classes are being assigned per job in essence that redundancy though can give us a double check and the fact that we can run this by class and it gives us a total at the end uh, for all classes and not just for the one particular project can be useful when we're trying to figure out our total you know job cost uh kind of of system you you have some other project reports that you can kind of do that with but they're not quite as comprehensive sometimes so if i duplicate this over here for example and i go into my reports you do have a project project profitability summary report but you can see it's not quite as robust 25 to 1231 12 three one two five as the classes uh, report so those are some of the so those are some of the options in our in our issues so now we're gonna we're gonna do some alterizations with a similar kind of problem and and try to see if we can address some of these timing issues basically as we do the data input